What's up guys, F4H Rosso here. Today we're going to be doing a circuit experience tutorial video on the Autodromo Lago Maggiore, which is probably the worst pronunciation of it that's ever occurred, ever in the history of anything. Apologies to any Italian uh, followers I may have. Basically, with these videos, what we do uh, is I will do a circuit experience mode lap versus the gold time and the videos kind of serve a dual purpose so I've done a few on my channel before on the Nürburgring, Alsace Village, Bathurst this is a track that has been quite frequently requested so and it's a track I love uh, of the original circuits Maggiore is, is right up there as, as being one of the best if not the best fantastic flowing circuit with lots of technical uh, corners difficult corners double uh, double apex corners and things like that to contend with yeah, but basically what these videos serve as is a uh, a guide to getting gold medals on the circuit experience mode, but also as a track guide, a, a more broad track guide as to what, you know, kind of lines you should be taking, um, different ways of attacking different corners and things like that. Uh, so yeah, we're going to attack the circuit experience mode. First up, you're going to see a replay uh, from me on board. I will not talk over that, it will just literally be a replay of me attacking the circuit in circuit experience mode. And then from there, we'll have a look from outside of the car and break it down. See you on the other side, guys. Okay, so we're ready to break down the Lake Maggior circuit. A bit of groundwork before we go ahead with uh, with anything. Just a few things that I wanted to uh, you know make you guys aware of. Usually in these track experience guides or track guides, circuit experience guides, can't get my words out, we use cone markers for the simple fact that they're a great reference point for braking, but also it makes a video more relatable for people that are using things like cone markers in their you know gaming uh, setup also in this video we are using five front on the brake balance i feel that the alpha in group three and group four benefits greatly from having uh, the brake bias pushed forwards it makes it a lot more predictable under braking the uh, alpha has a nasty habit with rear brake bias or even uh, neutral brake bias of uh, the the rear end trying to come around uh, under braking so yeah, we're using five forwards on the brake bias and traction control set to two. And before I hear the choruses of, meh, he's using traction control, he can't be very good. We're not an elite channel. If that's what you're after, go and have a look at someone else. Um, we we use whatever assists uh, here. 
I feel that the majority of people that watch my channel are probably going to be using things like traction control in group three. So we're going to use it too, because as I say, I want it to be as relatable as possible. And uh, something that everybody hopefully can learn from and take things from. We don't want to be that channel that has traction control set to zero, uses only the assists that you see in the real car, no braking markers, yada, 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 all because it makes someone feel a bit better. Um, right, so, heading down into the first corner, you want to be keeping right, obviously, first corner is a tricky 90 degree left-hander. If you're not using the cone markers, uh, the first corner is nice and easy because you've got loads of reference points. You're looking at the 100 meter board, uh, which is just above the car there. And you can also see this uh, kind of a, a grid slot just ahead of you as well. We're breaking around about that kind of mark, where the two cones are essentially. So just after there, you've seen us break. Nice and straight under braking. As soon as you see the second cone, start to swing the car in. You're going to be taking plenty of curb in this first corner to make the run to the second turn as straight as possible and to minimize time. Last thing you want to do is go skating around the outside of the curb. It's just going to cost you time and it's going to cost you exit speed also. So a nice big chunk of that curb on the inside. As soon as the car is straight, you can see I'm straight back on the brakes. Don't run the car too deep into this corner. You spend forever because it's so tight waiting for the car to rotate for you to be able to get on the power. Take a nice early apex on this one. Really hug that inside curb. As soon as you see the yellow on the outside, you see that little yellow bin or marker or whatever it is, get back on the power. Let the car naturally run out to the outside and set yourself up by sweeping over to the right-hand side of the track for the next left-hander. Kind of deceptive corner, this, because you can take it flat quite easily, but you don't want to. The reason being, if you take this left-hander flat, it puts you in a really horrible position for the, the right-hander afterwards. It creeps up on you so quickly, this right-hander. So you'll see, we just take a little bit of a lift, about mid-corner, and basically it helps the car. We don't want to be any further over to the right here. Even this is kind of a sub-optimal line. You'd like to be more towards the centre of the circuit, but we're not so far away that we can't redress You know, the, the car coming back on itself. Naturally, the car doesn't want to have quick changes of direction. It unsettles the car, it shifts the balance of the weight, it makes it more unpredictable. So that little confidence lift through that left-hander really sets yourself up nicely for this right. So you can see we've not gone too far over and we're able to bring the car back to the left to set us up for the right. Nice early apex again on this one because the corner opens up quite nicely and you can use the runoff if you wish. We've not on this lap. Nice and early on the power. Basically you can use up until you've got two wheels on the red over on the left. I wouldn't go any further. You can pick up a penalty on it. It's not a huge penalty. Uh, but it's one of the areas that GT Sport is more relaxed on its penalties, that one. Nice and early on the power. And head down to finish the first sector. One of the trickiest corners on the track, this one. It's uh, it's it's kind of difficult when you first start to pick up the, the Lake Maggio circuit. Of, of where to kind of brake, where you need to be aiming your car you know, what the optimal line is through here. For me, you're looking for the curb on the left-hand side, so the white curb that you see there just in front of the front left wheel of the car to finish. Once that's ended, you want to be hard on the brakes, but keep a wide line. The reason being, we're going to take a late sweep. So you see, I've still, I'm still right on the outside of the circuit because I'm going to take a late sweep towards the apex, just here. Take a nice little bit of the curb on the inside if you take that kind of line, basically you'll see from the telemetry, I'm already starting to feed back on the power and I've not even apexed the corner yet. It gives you a great run up the hill, which is something that is massively beneficial. The last thing you want to do is take a shallow line through there and you'll be suffering all the way up this hill. So take a nice open line on the brakes just after the curb, sweeping late and nice and early on the power. Let the car drift out to the left naturally and bring it up to the right for the S's. S's can be pretty tricky. You're looking for the curb on the right hand side just after that starts, a little dab on the brakes. Not too hard on the brakes. As you can see, we're already back off them at this point. Just a little dab, just to help the nose be a bit more compliant. A lot of, if you've seen my track guides before, a lot of the way I use the brake 
is less about stopping the car and more about making the car comply with what I'm asking. So a little dab on the brakes can help the nose point in, uh, a downshift or upshift and things like that. You can manipulate the way the car handles without even using the wheel, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Uh, so nice amount of curb on the inside. Take as much of the inside runoff on this right hand uh, right hander as you possibly can without getting a penalty as you can see we've done there reason being it sets you up really nicely for this left hander at the end if you're any further to the left or if you take a suboptimal line through that right hander it can really really affect your run and with this being the longest straight on the circuit it's not really something that you can afford it has a massive knock-on effect on your entire lap time a flat out run at this point Absolutely no dramas at all. Bit of time to relax and spy your breaking point for the most fun corner on the track. The insanely banked right-hander. You're looking at, basically if you're using the cones, the two cones, which is a common theme amongst GT Sport. The two cones on the, uh, on the um, outside of the corner usually denotes where a decent breaking point is going to be. We're looking at just after the two cones, so you can see there's a... Uh, a little black board just on the left there. Basically, as you hit that black board, you want to be hard on the brakes and down three gears. Keep the car wide and take a late sweep. You want to be using a decent amount of that curb on the inside. This is one of the areas where using the cone markers can actually hurt you because there's a cone right in the middle of where you want to be. So on this, uh, on this lap, obviously, we've avoided using any more curb, but you can use plenty of that white curb. Already back on the power at this point. You can see I'm already foot down, fully down, traction control kicking in. In actual fact, we're probably a little bit late on the power here. You can get on the power, because of the camber of this corner, you can get on the power so early. You just have to be really, really, really careful not to kick up any of the gravel on the outside, because it does really affect your run. Again, nice and simple, the next sector. Keep a nice tight line through the left. It sets you up really nicely for the right, which should be easily flat with a little bit of kerb. Keep the car left. On the left hand side you will see a big dark bit of rubber on the kerb. Again, where the two cones are. A little dab on the brakes just after that. We're going to go down into fourth gear. Very tempting here to snatch third, but it's not worth it. The extra gear shift doesn't really do anything for you in the power band coming out of the corner because the, the run is so short between the two corners. But also fourth just seems to be a smoother gear. It settles the car down nicely. Third, because you're so high in the rev range, the car can be a, a, a bit squirrely. So, one downshift into fourth. Spy your entry, back on the power and let the car run out to the kerb on the outside. As you start to run out of kerb, you want another ever so slight dab on the brakes. You'll see me take just there. And just basically, again, it's just to get the nose to be compliant. Get the car into the corner. Get it pointed to where you want it to be. At this point, again, we're already back hard on the power. The car has got so much grip that you can you can accelerate insanely early, even on the racing hard tyres, which is the default for this challenge. Hard on the power and let the car run out naturally. Try and be as smooth as possible. You want to use uh, as little resistance as possible to prevent that traction control from kicking in if you are using it. If you aren't, well done. Bit of a difficult one the last corner because aside from the cones there is very little in terms of braking reference points. You can see there's a little fence on the right hand side just at the very right of your screen at the moment. That's probably as close to braking reference as you're going to get for this corner. You want to be braking just about that point. You can get away with taking a huge amount of kerb on the inside of this corner. Once you're on the kerb, we're hard back on the power or feeding the power back on at this point. I'm probably a little bit late on the power for this one. Let the car naturally run out wide to the exit for the run down to the finish line. And that is a lap of the Magil circuit. For this lap, it was a 156.3 with the gold time being a 2.05 flat. So plenty of time to be played with. And we're all done. So that's today's circuit experience track guide completed. We are fully golded on the Lake Maggiore circuit. And I hope it's been helpful for you guys too, whether or not you were struggling to get the gold or you were just looking to pick up tips on how to tackle what is quite a technical and difficult circuit itself. I hope either way 
it's been a decent and informative video for you and something a little bit different for the channel. We don't do the circuit experience videos very often. There's something I enjoy doing. I love passing over what little knowledge I've got to you guys. Uh, so yes, I hope you found it helpful and enjoyable. A double whammy today because I promised you all a video last night uh, and I didn't deliver. Had a bit of a sound issue with my Elgato deciding that for three videos that I recorded, it would not record any sound. And obviously by that point, I was getting extremely frustrated. Um, so yeah, we've done this one today and I'm also going to stream this evening. Uh, this evening, we will do some sport mode, some pretty decent races today. Groups around Alsace Village looking extremely tasty indeed, as well as the one make Alpha 4C race on the Maggiore circuit, which would be a cool one to pick up seeing as we've done the... Uh, Major circuit experience today so look out for the stream later on we will also do an open lobby so if you're looking at racing with me against me um, or whatever it may be uh, we will do one of those later too so i'll see you all at the usual time about eight o'clock uh, and we'll get some racing done as always guys really hope you enjoyed the video if you did feel free to hammer that like button for me and if you've not already subbed i'd love to have you on board and we'll see you later. Thanks ever so much for watching, guys. Bye-bye.